Good evening. I have my transparent hat on for another pop-up meeting. Live streaming. I'm going to look at some uh, Blazor uh, forms and validation. Um, that's different than my office streams. But um, let's quickly start. Welcome back. It's evening now in Europe. Usually I do all these kind of things in the morning at uh, 6.45 a.m. But today a pop-up live stream. Um, let's do something different. And let's see uh, what I... S oh, it's already... No, it's live stream. What I found is that my bot command for project is incorrect let's see about project and this is not correct that should be working on is going Martin is going to look at blazer forms and validation, maybe capture. Do, do, do. Um, save it. That's what I didn't do last time. So put this back to the other screen for my monitoring and check if the project is now, project command is now working. Project. That's better. Yes. Okay, let's go to the live coding screen. I think my previous stream, I used Fish Studio for a Blazor project. Fish Studio preview. Let's clean my glasses so I can see something happening oh. what's this writing components the lighting is on and also in this one I have a head a hole in my head the to-do list is a blazer application that I'm using as a trial and error thingy start value oh I had a, um, a remark on this on Twitter let's see if I can get that up up on the screen maybe oh and there is a new version available for Fish Studio. I'm not going to install that now. I asked a question how to put in a date value in, in here because I was not aware how to do this Is uh, because if you put something in like 2019 11 this is not accepted as you see cannot convert int to system date so what I got from Twitter as an answer was this one you can do start date equals something like this copy this is an answer by cryptet Territorian Darwin. Okay, move this aside. Better close it because it's only eating resources. So should be something doing it like this. 
and take that in here. Oops. So in Blazor, you're basically parsing some sort of a function in there. That's actually recognizing the quotes in brackets properly. And I don't really remember what the page looked like. So go and check this by running it. Should be going and running. Why it's not running? It is. Build succeeded. Localhost. Um, five. Was that in the code? Five. Eleven. It is. Yes. Okay, so that works. So now what I want to do is just add something like a uh, like a form page to the website. Mm, um, close the application. I set the application. Then the index. So what I want to do is um, something like this. I have this website. It's actually the website of my wife's beauty parlor. There's a contact page on here. If you look at the contact page, there's this simple thing with your name, email, subject, and some some things, and some text in here. And um, I want to see if I can do that in Blazor as well. There's a lot of decoration in here. If I do something like an email and I say Martin. Um, van Stam. This is not the right format, so that's not right. And do something like at Maarten van Stam. What the hell? Now it's in the right format send it thinks that the name is a um, required field and the subject and the message so that's what I'm going to try and I also think I have the page somewhere but let's first do something like um, and adding a page. So, add, raise a page, raise a page without entity framework. Is it a raise a page, by the way? I um, think so. Add contact generate page model create partial view no, use a layout page no at least I don't think so.
Leave empty it set as razor view start. Um, if it is set in razor view start file. Do I have a view start file? No. So what happens if I do this? Add. Take some time. Um, I, in the meantime, there is this um, example. Following the example model. Let's open this in the uh, VM. So let's make it easier to switch between one and the other. Forms validation are supported Blazor by data annotation. The following example model type defines, defines a validation logic using data annotations. System component model data annotations, public example model a form is defined using the edit form component. The following form demonstrates typical elements for um, components eraser code. Like the edit form, example model name. Form validates the input uh, name, blah, 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 validator, validator summary. All the input components, including the support, uh, edit form, support arbitrary attributes. Uh, any attribute that doesn't match component parameters and editor rendered HTML. Starship. So, where's the Starship defined then? If I go to the other example, this one, that's an example by Gunnar, and this looks look like the um, example. Let's create a simple model guestbook, properties for poster name. A message is it a class so where do I store the class in here model no it is not so that's different if I take this out Delete. Yeah. Data. So I should do something. Let's see what's in. As a component, add new item blazer. 
that's not in there, so it should be Razor. Razor page. Um, let's see because these are all components, I think. Razor components. Let's make that something like a contact. Now there is nothing like the page. Page counter. So that's something like routing, I think. At page. Contact. From the root. One. the example for this using blaze form validation models my guest book is contact in my case where's my example page Something like this. Contact. So what do I need in there? Paragraph. And an edit form. That's still in the blazer layout. Edit form model equals to add model. The question is what is a model in this case? equals to add model on valid submit handle valid submit handle valid submit Submit on invalid submit invalid submit handle invalid submit at handle handle invalid submit That's something the this has in there, and then we have this um, 
protection protection protected void protected void handle submit valid submit Finally, valid submit and some copy like this handle invalid submit oops and model guestbook entry private get in my case it will be not a guestbook entry but it will be an contact entry private contact entry that's called model equals to new contact entry now let's see where that is defined the guestbook entry that's this one can we put it into the same code or should we do that into a model Let's add a folder in here. First check Google model blazer blazer. Blazer, blazer, ASP dot net core. It's looking for some clothing in here. I don't want clothes. That creates like folder structure, folder structure. Project structure for Blazor apps. Project, project, no. static files, recent components, pages, layout, Blazor bootstrap, build output, run the app. Yeah, it's not really showing. Oh, there's my doorbell. Nice. No one's home. Um, did I create a folder in here? Model? Add folder model Really don't have a clue if it's at um, if that's the way to do it. Um, no item C sharp class what's it called contact entry contact entry like this public class public class same thing to do model Put something in like this. In fact, I want to have, let me go into the contact in here. I want a name, email, subject, and a message. I want a name, an email. Email, a 
a subject. And I want a message. This is something like annotation, I think. Yeah. Data annotations. Right. And I want all fields required. Copy. And this one. And name max length is not correct. So let's kick that out. Let's bother with the annotations a little bit later. First, do things first. Install Microsoft Recommends Rosalind Analyzers. Blah, blah, blah. Build a live analysis. Yeah, nice. Um, first, go to the this one. How do we get that this namespace in here? Could not be found missing a directive or an assembly reference. Yeah, that's missing. But how do I get this in here? How do I get this from the namespace? Let me check the other one. To do list data that's in the weather forecast. Weather forecast service. To do list data. No namespace here. Find current value. System globalization. There is like a user in a razor page using user. Um, using like this. Copy in here. Not components, but model. Semicolon, no, no semicolon. Now this is recognized and model is most likely this one. Like model with a capital M and that's specified in here. Model with a capital M like this. Yeah. Vistudio Web Code Generation pre Preview 3. Uh, workspaces, but workspaces was not found. An approximate best matches code analysis. Workspaces was resolved. Okay. So now we have a model. Support data validations. Then using the models, it's exactly in here. My contact. Leave my leave me a message. 
on my site. Yeah. The edit form. Div alert class. Class alert. Status message. Copy. What's the status class in here? Data annotations validator and the validation summary. And then the form group. Something like this, copy in here, form group, label, name, what was my model again? Here, name, email, it's name, input text, ID is name. Class form control binding to model name and the validation mirror message model name. Then we had email copy email part. email this is not name this is email email form control bind to email validation message email Next will be subject. No, third one, subject. Subject, subject, model item, subject. Subject Then the last part Copy What was it again? Message Message Message, 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 yeah, last part, message, submit button, okay. Let's see. Handle valid submit. Valid. Status class alert info. This one. And the message daytime now. Handle valid submit. Yeah. Copy, 
invalid. We'll go show a danger. Danger class. Is that all default? Edit form is a blazer container form. Validator is added like any other blazer component. Page above uses the data annotation validator. But you can create custom one if you like. Data annotation validator. First go to the official documentation, like this, what it's doing here is having the name string length, error message, name is too long, yeah. Input text, input text area. Select input number, checkbox input date. So let me see if I get the code from the other project. If I can show that. Um, this one could not be opened um, yeah remove from the list this one maybe take that away first because I only want to look at the code page, contact view model. Come on. What I did over here is I created my um, um, tabs on the right side, the right side, and I want to put this back on top. That's a lot better. So in this case, I have a few few back title. This is um, the old way. What do I have in here? ASP validation summary, model only. ASP validation 4, is that still used in Blazor? Let's see if I should have view models, contact view model. It's like this. So something like this for the name. And I need to translate it for you. In the model. Error message, name, that should name is mandatory, name is mandatory, um, 
minimal length for name is five characters characters ters come on typos Let's move this to the other window. Copy. This is for the email required. Email address is mandatory. Email address is mandatory. Tory. Email is not in the right format. Email address has an incorrect format. Um, subject is mandatory. Subject is mandatory, mandatory. Then we have this one message required error message. Message is a mandatory field. Um, message is a mandatory field this message is too long max thousand characters allowed string message so this is the model that's kind of the same as the one that I have over here um, let's look at the menu we need to put a new menu in First, let's try and look at this, how it's running. And now it's not in here anymore. Not yet, anyway. So we need a add an extra menu item over here copy nav link that should be contact oe oe list rich fetch data contact page contact something like this that's a five. Contact page. Now we have a contact page. And we have actually a contact page. Okay. Wow. Name is mandatory. Email is mandatory. Subject mandatory, message mandatory, and a summary, name, email, subject, so I say Maarten van Stam, and we have a date with the helid invalid submit, and now click OK, name is now OK. 
Maarten. Nou, die e-mail address is incorrect. Subject is mandatory. Subject. My new subject. Message. Um, this is my message. It is a message in a bottle. Okay, and now the email is still not correct. Martin van Stam. Now it's considered to be correct, but it's incorrect. It should have something like dot and l in here. And then okay. And now it's valid. Okay. That's a good start. Close this and see what's next. And now what's next because the message part is not should not be a text field, but it should be something else. It be um, an input text area. Text area should be in text area. Make that last one in here. text area and according to the layout here text area input text area input text area like this and let's see if we get a text area now Contact. Now we have a text area. Right. Okay. That works. Now let's go. Oh, well, let's submit. Go to the example from Gunnar so this worked properly disable the button until the form is valid you can actually dig deeper and try to some do something fancy if you want an ok button to be disabled while form is invalid I found a blog post disabling the submit button in blaze validation by Peter Himschoot so the Dutch guy it sounds Dutch. Works as a leader, trainer, architect, and strategist with you to you. Twitter. Can you tweet? Tweet deck. Look for Peter Him Schoot. Yeah. And follow this guy. Yeah. 
always follow people that you can think you can learn something. Close that. Back to the documentation. Um, where the provider, where he provided solution through a custom input watcher. My solution is smaller. We can assign it to edit form either model or edit context, but not at the same time. When using edit context, we have way more control over validation. Edit context. This is the way I solve the additional, the need for additional components. I solved button disabled status problem with a simple but not straightforward trick. Instead of boolean true or false value for disabled value, I went through with a string. Um, value is either disabled or no. Notice that the empty string leaves a disabled attribute on the button. So if you go to something like this button type submit disabled is something like this oh. wrong copy type is submit type is yeah disabled is at ok disabled and at ok disabled is not in there can I generate it what if I do control point nothing that should give something like this copy protected protect string ok disabled get set disabled Welcome in stream. If I look, also, if you look at uh, there's my doorbell again. Come on, I need to cancel this one. Turn off the events from my doorbell. If you can guess what I kind of doorbell I have. Then you're not allowed to do the lottery with me. Disable motion alerts, disable alerts, the other one, settings, the other doorbell, disable, disable, and put on, do not disturb, I'm streaming, come on. Welcome also in the YouTube stream. Uh, um, for better viewing, it's always better to go to Twitch, I think. But if you like it in YouTube, then that's okay with me too. Um, let's see, we are going with the OK button and make it disabled. If the validation is not right. Oh. This is not right, it's a web page. Um, okay, disable this, yeah. And now, edit context on field change. That's like this. Um, edit context on field changed, set OK, status, that's this one, copy.
project. In case you might wonder what I'm working on. Owing to look? I'm owing to look. There's a typo in there. Come on. How bad can it be? Um, live coding, where is the... here? What we put in here is... Private void, edit context on field changed. Set OK disabled status. And if the set OK status is um, OK, then it's null. Otherwise, it's disabled. But I'm missing the edit context. Edit context. And edit context is from this one. And in my case, that's in the edit form. The edit context, is there edit context in here? No. No, but he did not have a model in there. Let's see what would be the good option there. In this case, he has the guestbook entry model. Where's the model for this? In this case, he has this model, and on valid submit, and that he leaves it out all. So instead of the model, he's creating an edit context. That's called private edit context. And he's naming that like edit context. Edit context. Why is this squiggly? Oh, it's just a little bit of a delay. Edit context. And that's one related to that one. And adding an edit context to the edit form. In this case, he's leaving this all out. Edit context. equals to add edit context, I think. Let's check. Yeah. And he's taking out the summary. Data uh, validation summary, removing this data validation summary. Like this. Then label name, input text ID, form control, bind value name, input text that's still the same, validation for model name that's the same, model text. So that all seems to be the same. This is how the guestbook opens when you run it. Validation message has shown for each field and OK button is disabled. Yeah, let's try that.
Kijk het in. Contact page. Oh, and unaccept the exception handled. Reload. Where is the error? This is not okay. Edit form requires model parameter or an edit context parameter, but not both. I thought I had removed one of both. Edit form requires a model parameter or an edit context parameter, but not both. And what do we have? Edit context. So what's wrong? Interesting. Show raw exception details. Let's show the raw exception details. Edit form requires a model parameter or an edit context parameter, but not both. And I don't have both. What the? Not sure why this is. It's gone the wrong way. Oh. Come on. Are you making fun of me? Really? Hmm. Okay. Um, must have been forgetting something. Uh. Oh. Right. I did not edit this. Um, So, let's move this all up, and then, and then, protect string um, disabled is this one, then I forgot about the, <coughs> excuse me, the init, protected over Right, override void on init. On init initialized. On init. Okay. My guess is it's not on init, but it's. On initialized. Um, edit context, edit context equals to new edit context model, yes model, edit context, um, on field changed but that's an event handler equals to tap is not working edit context on field changed something like that base on init 
I guess it's initialized. Like this, maybe? Um, on after render, base on after render. Protected override. Protected override. On after render, on after render. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Is it? Come on. Override on after render. What's happening? No. Again, on after render, render, oh, this should be void on after render. I really don't know what's going on here. On after render. <laughs> Damn. The code format is doing some strange things here. Base on after render set ok status disabled like this then we have an on field changed protected override Void. No, it's private. Private void. <laughs> Shit. Private void. Edit context on field changed. Object sender comma field field changed e set okay okay disabled status like that why is this one Said okay, disabled status. Oh, I have a duplicate in here. This one is duplicate. No more status message, status class. Something like this.
The class is gone, I think. Yeah. Well, let's try and run this. Okay, F5. Oh. No go command. Yeah. So, it's saying something on after rendered, render. It's the first time. Google. On after render ASP.NET Core 3.0, maybe. Upgrade an existing on after render. Replace on after render after render with implementation um, first render or on after render async. Where is the information for that? Two gotchas. On after render, now in my component section, I call can call the JavaScript function using the returns invoke async. Blah blah, blah can be uh, as a result. I add a code to my components code specifically. Yeah, pull first render. After render, pull first render. This. Field contact edit context nether assigned. Where does it point to? It's pointing to the to do list. Why? Line 42. So why is it selecting line 2 then? No. Well, let's first see if we can run this. Contact. Yes. Okay. That's like um, okay. Let's say Martin. That's okay. Martin. That's not okay. My new subject is my. I'm not sure if my OK button is enabled. It's a bit tough to see. My message. this okay apparently that's okay but 
it's still active, I think. Oh, no, it's not. Um, at. Now it's active. It's very hard to see if the button is active or not. Um, also, I, you want to do this after a couple of seconds, maybe it's you to revalidate. Because this is not right. It only finds it out if I exit it. Now it's okay. I click something, but nothing happening. Nothing is happening. Oh, we have a starter. Go back to the project over here. Save button form. Uh -huh. Did this? This that? Did that? This is how the guest book opens. When I run it, validation message is shown. Field OK is button. Button is disabled. With edit control class, we are able to take control. F we are able to take form under our control. Inside edit control, now edit context class. There is. Um, this has changed as well somewhere. Let's see, edit context, that's the one, and that's the model. On field changed, on validation requested, on validation state changed field. It has events that triggers for, for changes. So we have methods to mark fields as unmodified. It's easy to get field ID used by Blazor and notify edit context of changes if we need. Check validation station when field changes. There's one more minor thing to solve. When the form gets validated, I want OK button to be enabled at the same moment and not when I leave the field. That's what I was just mentioning. After some research, hacking have came an ugly solution with key up event and reflection. I'm sure Blazor guys don't want you to do that at home, but here's my solution. But that's not my solution, I think. Wrapping it up. It's a small thing, but the uh, user will love it. Found flutes. Uh, yeah. So what's the official documentation saying about this? Required string length 16 error message. Yeah, this is the same as I used. Form validation. This is making use of a model. Valid submit. Input text based on the input event. Um, use the input text component to create a custom component that uses the input event instead of change the event. Create a component with following markup. And use the component just as an input text is used. Validation support.
Please describe how to bind submit button disabled state to validation is valid. Page missing documentation how make manual validation on submit. Edit context dot net core three point zero Let's see if there's some interesting information here maybe endpoint routing no um, edit Context Disable Submit Found a blog post disabling the submit. Um, this is by Peter Hemschat. Input watcher. This is how open when I run it. This is exactly the same document as from Gunner. Other validations. So one of these guys is stealing it, is that true? From who is this? Blazor form validation, is that the same as this one? Yeah, this is the same one. Click. Validate your blazer form using edit form. This one. Continue with cookies. On valid submit, create account, data annotation, <sighs> I used editor form instead of plain HTML form, it will provide all the validation logic I needed, uh, input text is used by binding your input, inherits input base. Display validation error from the server. Now oh, let's see if it's how is this done? If I go to this one, for instance, this 
that sent a message and that's refused. Um, move it outside. Let's copy it somewhat like it's done with the other one. Or maybe Fluent Validation, Components Improvements, Blazer, yeah. so I think it should be going back to what it previously was edit context my dear fist studio in here um, validate starsheet font awesome copy this so what if I just put a um, script in here can you use script how to use a style sheet in blazer Use style sheet blazer. I want to use different CSS for, for different layouts in blazer, so I don't want to import all CSS directly in the index HTML, but do it on every single page. Yeah. You can do it two ways, if you can think of, um, add style tag to your page. Um, and put a CSS style into the tag, no, that is not what I want. Load the CSS via, via the JavaScript interrupt, the JavaScript portion to do is found in this answer. How do I load up CSS files? Thanks for the answer, but I have done it with adding CSS link yeah, into components that I want with a suggestion of a friend, but it's not much as a good solution because there are latency during the loading of CSS loading HTML. Well, I agree. Link. Link tag in the middle of Blazor components. Since Blazor doesn't support CSS isolation, I found that the best way to isolate CSS is to make a CSS file for each component you create and import it into the component razor. But I wanted to know that if it's right to add a link, well, something stylesheet, 
CSS tag in the top of my component file. The link tag is supposed to be in the host CS HTML. Okay. Which one is newer? This one is the latest. If you want to know what the file looks like if you visit Blazor Fiddler, the file telling it's the second file. Yeah, sure, I know where the link is tag and I'm aware it has to be there. But in order to make CSS isolation, it has to be. I have to add it to the component page. Do you have a good suggestion? What about add CSS block? Take a look at the issue here. When I use this, I get an error. The name CSS does not exist in the current context. I get the idea from the link that I sent you. It was supposed to work, but as you see in that issue, they're appealing that for the feature and some ASP not memory conversation. Uh, maybe they're working on it. So what I would suggest is go to the ASP.NET Gitter conversation and ask there. Or come on. Search for at CSS Blazor. CSS isolation blazer components. The only thing keep us from moving to Blazor is a core content front end technology is the lack of CSS isolation. Uh, change CSS isolation Blazor Blazor. Totally discreet use CSS without feature. It's looking right code without namespaces. I use CSS grids to define my pages. Here's a workaround. Scoped CSS. Why not use the style we already have? There's the discussion with at CSS. I just added JS edition as well. Script. Without CSS isolation. If CSS allows you to blah blah blah, transparent. Razor syntax can already achieve the same level of inline styling, yeah, but that's the style. Thanks for your input. Do I use multiple file options? How can I refer to CSS? Uh, inherits. Blazor tutorial. Overview. 
view. Web assembly. Place components, UI and layout. Layout. Blazer layout. Google, where to store my CSS, CSS Blazor. CSS attributes of blazer form component. The simplest way would be to take something like this, copy. to hosts like um, like this style sheet href font awesome integrity So, if I have a text, for instance, like it already has bootstrap, I think. So, what if I copy my complete structure over here? Copy, bring it over in my contact. And here's the form. Take the form out. Let's see, we have a container, and a row, and an MD6. Thanks for visiting our website. Thanks for visiting, visiting our website. If you like, if you like to contact us, you have the following options envelope email use the contact form on this page
Bitch. With this, you send an email to our address. If you ask a question and added enough information, do 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 information. We can contact. This is a phone, mobile, visit. Street, zip, city, You can call to call us at number to create an appointment. Question. Yeah, let's name here. Let's move the form in the section of the form something like this save f5 let's see how that looks Contact. Yeah, this looks already nice. Martin. Martin at Martin van Stam. Dot UK. Go and UK. Uh, subject. Message. Okay. Um, I don't know, but if someone calls you on a private number, I'm not picking up the phone because you're not telling me who you are. So. In that case, leave your voicemail, or otherwise, don't call me. Yes. Um. It's 
So now, let's see how we handle the submit. For post. That can only be done if let's go back to the first option like this. Where we have this this one. Still running. This is no copy paste. Now I'm missing the stats class and stars and status message. Yeah, there you have it. Stats class status message. Copy. that that should be like this copy valid and the other one is invalid Submit. Hmm. What to do, what to do. I would say something like this. Copy. Well, make it. Turn it back to this one. Star Trek edit form. Did I? Oh. Oh, I killed it. Um, edit form. Like this. this now I miss something in the what's this element tag is missing closing bracket true copy this a five value attribute missing hmm.
contact. What's this message about the attribute missing? Yeah, that's this one. Let's close everything except for this. Form group, that's the same status message. Never used, it is used. It's here. Submit in this case. Send a mail. In this case, the summary is not available. And I don't need that really. View back user message. again just for kicks copy the URLs of this these pages um, why does it say search Google copy put it as comment in my code here So put in the other one as code in as thingy in there. Valid submit and where's the valid submit? It's like this. How is this done in the normal one? View back user message submit is done. It's 
submit. I wonder why the how the submit is performed. Um, the contact form. Contact view model. That's not in there. So how do I actually send the submit? I mail service. Name, email. Then I do a send. something like send mail async let's try to avoid the risk that I'm showing some credentials here Result. Oh, that's on the contact page. HTTP post. The model state is valid. This is in the App controller. So where is the app controller in Blazor? Google replace app controller Blazor using Blazor. And what's the difference between Razor and Blazor? Submit form blazer. Blazer University. Oh, let's see if I. When rendering an edit form component, Blazer will output an HTML form element, standard web control, and submit. Yeah. Razor will intercept form submission events and routing back through Razor view on valid submit, on invalid submit, or on submit. Each of these events pass added context as a parameter, which we can use to determine the status of the user input. We can use none of these events or one or of these events. The only situation where we can use two events is where we, when we set on valid submit and on valid invalid submit together. Neither of these two events can be consumed if on submit is set. So this one has on valid submit and on invalid submit then this is what I have on valid submit was executed on invalid on submit is executed form when the form is submitted regardless whether whether it the form passes validation or not it is possible to check the validi validity status of the form by executing edit context validate Model person on submit form submitted. That's form submitted. So, um,
void form submitted edit context blazer validations limitations implementation form validation blazer preview 8 is an important limitation what will be addressed future release although the shortfall will be addressed we'll work on the we'll work around the project problem added context field added into field state it's an exercise in learning how blazer internals work but first let's look at the problem when the user experience in preview 9 for a simple form where all the properties are simple types validation works fine but when the other form has properties complex types such as person class or example having a home address property that is type of address the sub properties will not be validated unless the user edits them the following screenshot shows how the edit context validate in the previous example returns true to indicate the form is value even though the address line and the address postal code are both decorated with required yeah in behavior we actually want to want the result in the user experience following screenshot yes and that's it that's it inheriting from input base okay edit context field identifier I think I need to look into this some more for the next time. Writing custom validation. take this one also in here in the code and continue with that some a li little bit later okay to do is add back the thing where it said that it was submitted like this think status class that's in there status class yeah that's this one let's run this this will be the last thing that we do today Contact. No. The summary is still in there. Maarten. Maarten at van stam dot co dot uk. Subject. Message. Oké. Okay. Handle submit. invalid submit great for now 
um, I think it's enough. Next we are going to look at the uh, submission and um, actually going to handle the um, submit of the form. And um, So that's it for today. Tomorrow morning I will be back for office, um, some more office development. I do that in early in the morning and maybe tomorrow night another pop-up um, stream like this one and um, if you've been watching thanks for watching and hope to see you tomorrow again bye bye